All right, something must be wrong with the space-time continuum or something like that because, oh my gosh, KU is 3-0 and in football. What? But I will say, I love it. So with that, here's a review. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockChalk01, and today, yesterday, whenever you're watching this, the 2-0 Kansas Jayhawks headed down to Houston, Texas to take on the 1-1 and future Big 12 opponent in the Houston Cougars. And they won again. They beat the Houston Cougars by a final score of 48 to 30. Yeah, who in their right mind saw this coming? Cause I sure the heck didn't. I predicted that KE would lose this game, let alone get blown out in this game. And the line at the beginning of the game was Houston eight and a half. We killed that spread once again. And KU is now 3-0 against the spread, which is great. But also, KU is 3-0 on the season, which is the first time they've done that since 2009. They have also won back-to-back -back road games for the first time since 2008. So, yeah, a lot of good things are happening. Also, a little nitpick here, but this is probably the first time in what seems like forever that KU has a better record than Kansas State, Missouri, and Nebraska all in the same season at this point. When was the last time that happened? I don't remember because I must have been like wee babies since then, but it's happened. And yeah, there was a lot of good things that came out of this game, but there were a bit of negatives and the good outweighed the bad in this one, but there were still some things that need to be fixed. So with that being said, for those of you who don't know, I give positives and negatives about the game. I give a player the game and a player who needs to improve. So without further ado, let's do this. So first off, let's take a look at some of the positives. And it was another dominant offensive performance for the Kansas Jayhawks with six touchdowns in this game, along with, for the first time this season, two field goals by Jacob Borchilla that were still inside 35 yards, but still. Yeah, KU had another offensive performance for the ages as they had 438 total yards with 158 coming through the air and 280 yards on the ground. Jeez, that number obliterates the Houston rush game as they only had 174 rushing yards all game long. So great things are happening there. Another positive was that KU converted when needed. Uh, 25 first downs for the Hawks. Houston did have one more than KU throughout the entire game, but still the 25 first downs is a good number. Also converting on third down, KU was seven of 12 for the entire game, which I found out during the broadcast that KU had the highest third down conversion percentage in the entire country. Like 77%, which is nuts, but the number has probably gone down just a bit since this game happened, but great. Also, as a little side note, KU was one for one on fourth down. So yeah, we converted a lot. We won the time of possession as KU held the ball for 31 and a half minutes while Houston had it for 28 and a half minutes. But the big positive that I got was as I talked about um, in the West Virginia video, that penalties were a big problem for us, uh, and that was a negative. Well, they fixed that as KU only had two penalties for 25 yards. So a lot of things got fixed in terms of not getting very many penalties. Now, even though I'm giving the offense a lot of love, I gotta give the defense a little bit of credit as well, as they won the turnover battle against the Cougars two to nothing, as uh, we had an interception and a fumble recovery off of a sack, so great things are happening there. Now to the negatives, and the only negative that I have is our defense is, or actually there's two, but uh, our defense is allowing these teams to score, and Houston putting up 30, I understand they were a good team, so they were going to put up points anyway, but in terms of like what you see in Big 12 numbers, KU allows the second most points in out of all the teams in the Big 12, which is not good. 
and they average about 27 points allowed a game. So that number needs to go down and that also includes yards per game because KU actually got outgained in the ball game 446 to 438 as Houston got just eight more yards, but that was all due to the passing game of Houston as they actually out threw KU as Houston got 272 yards through the air. And there was a lot of times that those plays happened because KU couldn't get to the quarterback in time. There were so many times that KU could have got a sack and the quarterback just evaded all the pressure and just made the throw five, six, seven yards at a time. And there was a couple big plays that he made as well, but you just gotta get, you gotta get the sack. That's all you gotta do. But that little nitpick there doesn't outweigh all the positives in this game. So yeah, with that being said, those are my positive and negatives. Now, before I give my player of the game, I do wanna give an honorable mention, and that is to Kenny Logan. Five tackles, three of them solo, and he also had the first KU turnover, which was an interception that led to KU going up and scoring a few plays later to tie the ball game. So here's that interception. So even though Kenny got that interception and he's my honorable mention, he is not my player of the game because there is no doubt in anyone's mind the player of the game is going to be Jalen Daniels. And oh my gosh, he played out of his mind. Daniels was 14 to 23 for 158 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. And also on top of that, led the team in rushing with 12 carries for 123 yards and two scores. The dude was everywhere. Uh, first, the run game. My gosh, he got out of so much pressure and made the big plays work and one of them was his first rushing touchdown that got KU on the board and set the tone for the rest of the ball game so here's that rushing touchdown although he did damage with his legs his arm power was key for KU winning this ball game and he had some incredible plays. Uh, one of them was this 60 yard bomb late in the second quarter to extend KU's lead to double digits to Tory Lachlan. And here's that play. And also one of his other touchdown passes was a little bit of trickery as he wasn't the one to receive the snap, but he was the one who made the passing touchdown to the former walk-on Jerry Casey. But yeah, Jalen Daniels was great. And if I do my math right, he was responsible for five KU touchdowns and also was responsible for 280 of KU's 400 plus total yards. Wow, uh, you played great and you deserve all the credit you need. And lo and behold, give your offensive line a bunch of credit as well because they have not allowed a sack in three weeks. Not one, he is, he's been pressured and he's avoided sacks, but has never been taken down for accredited sack. So good IQ, great play work by Jalen Daniels and he deserves my player of the game. Now my player who needs to improve is really tough to pick, but I just gotta go with my gut and say that it's Devin Neal. And he kind of struggled. Uh, 14 carries, 54 yards and no scores on 3.9 yards per carry. Yeah, he just could not find any hole at all in this game. I mean, even just like remotely, he was not getting enough touches 
normally what we would see, but he just could not find the crease. And, you know, that could be just because of offensive line trying to make those holes and Houston's defense closed them up or just miscommunication. It could be anything, but he just kind of struggled. And although he's now over 200 yards plus on the season, that 1,500 that he said at the beginning of the season to me, yeah, I don't see it happening. Hopefully he can get 1,000, but 1,500 is not looking pretty. But what are you going to do? So hopefully he can get the momentum back up in the next couple weeks. But for right now, my player who needs to improve is Devin Neal. And yeah, that's going to do it for my review of KU versus Houston. Again, the final score, Kansas 48 Houston 30. Leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos, and I should see you again for the next review as the 3-0 Jayhawks head back home to Memorial Stadium to take on the 3-0 Duke Blue Devils. But until then, have a good day. Never ever bring anxiety to the field house, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.